what's up closer to fam, and welcome back to the timeline in which the human Z fighters made a wish to become Saiyans to better protect the planet. Jumping right in for today's video, an extremely quick recap. When we last left off, this timeline ran through the events of the Battle of Gods, where Beerus sought to test Gohan's abilities and ended up testing all of the Saiyans in the end. We return to this story now. It had been only a few weeks since Beerus and Whis had made their initial visit, and things for the Z fighters had majorly changed. First, the fighting vigor of the pure-blooded Saiyans had been seriously bolstered to a level it hadn't been in a long time. But sparring matches that forced the Kai's to beg you to stop shaking the cosmos with your punches will do that though. Goku and Vegeta had always been the sword continuously trained no matter what, but now, with new prospects of power seen through Beerus, the two want to seek higher and higher levels. Even though he had received the same power as Goku, Vegeta decided to go on a small training excursion away from home after achieving his new form, and even Krillin and Yamcha were doing more training as well. While of course, Tien had only further intensified his training regimen and the regimen of his students as well. But it was already pretty clear to the once again human that he was falling behind without Vegeta as a training partner or his Saiyan biology, but this we will touch on later. Krillin had taken up position with the West City Police Force like in canon, but being stronger and more confident as a Saiyan, his arrest record had made him much more than so a meter made here. When dangerous criminals ran amok, there was one cop that the forest counted on above all others. This allows Krillin to gain a pretty decent amount of pull around West City, and so I think it would very soon be promoted to detective. And the time between cases could be long, so he was definitely training more. As for Yamcha, he was still working for slash with Mr. Satan. With no large tournaments coming up, he also had some downtime. The man hadn't seen any action other than some aliens who sought to battle Mr. Satan. So with more motivation and nearly the same amount of free time as in canon, Yamcha really has no choice but to train right now. With things getting more and more lively for the Z Fighters and their family, we move into the next phase of this timeline. We see Tien on the day that Vegeta has returned to West City. The two are currently one of their sparring matches in the Gravity Chamber. Having gotten stronger, the saying of the duo sets the gravity in the chamber to a much higher setting than Tien was used to. But according to Vegeta, he was already having to use his base form to spar, just to make it remotely possible for Tien to keep up. So lowering the gravity will make this little more than a game of tag to him. Unknown to Vegeta, the harshness of his words and Tien's growing anger, jealousy, and regret lit a fire in the Three-Eyed Warrior's heart. Where usually their spars were more measured and technique-based, this one was much more akin to Tien being Vegeta's punching bag. Finally, Vegeta scoffs at how pitiful his training session was and turns his back to go and turn the gravity off. Seeing red in all three eyes, Tien activates a technique he hadn't made use of in over a decade, the Kaioken technique, something he had went out of his way to learn from King Kai as his last attempt to not become a Saiyan in preparation for the androids 11 years ago. Vegeta's eyes widen as he feels Tien's key erupt from behind him, and he turns around just in time for Tien to slug him across the jaw hard enough to knock him on his ass. Vegeta wipes blood from his mouth and glares. Tien expected the Prince of All Saiyans to stand and continue the spar, no, the fight this had become. But instead, he did not. Instead of standing and viewing him as an opponent worthy of godly power like Tien so desperately wanted, or even just becoming a basic Super Saiyan, Vegeta stood and turned his back on him, turned the gravity machine off. As soon as the pressure of the gravity was off of him, Tien realized he had to push the Kaioken very far just to cover that small distance and hit Vegeta in time. He releases the technique and collapses to one knee as his body aches and he finds himself almost unable to move. Vegeta once again scoffs and begins walking away, telling Tien he can tolerate him not being a Saiyan, but he does not associate with cowards. He made his choice, and taking his anger out on him was pitiful. He was the one that wanted to be human again, and he was the one that wished to prove that humans could surpass Saiyans. He needs to stop whining and throwing tantrums and do it. Exiting the chamber, Vegeta announces he's going to find something to eat, and when he gets back, he expects the fool to be gone. The three-eyed human sat there on the floor, contemplating everything that had just happened. He was not mad at Vegeta. They had been considered friends, or somewhere close to that, for a while now, and he understood Vegeta pretty well. Vegeta was a hard ass, but that being said, he wouldn't tolerate or freely spend his time with him for training if the two didn't have some kind of positive relationship. So by process of elimination, this meant the only person Tien could be mad with was himself. On this train of thought, he thought more about his decision. Did he regret it or not? Finally, his body felt good enough to move, and consequently, he could hear the voices of Goten, Trunks, and Buri outside. Without context, he could not tell why, but Buri sounded mad, Goten sounded scared, and Trunks was laughing his head off. In the next few seconds, he could feel Buri's power skyrocket and saw Goten and Trunks flying away frantically. A perfect example of her mother's rage, Buri in her angry Super Saiyan form was about to give chase to the boys when her father called out to her in a chiding tone. The daughter flinches and powers down, flying over to her father. When asked why she was so angry, she explains that Trunks stuck a piece of candy in her hair and she didn't know why the stupid boy was always bullying her. Having grown much less form with his daughter, Tien kneels and checks around her head, going right into dad mode. He teases that she wouldn't have this problem if she shaved her head like him and her Uncle Chiaotzu or Krillin. The girl pouts and refuses to ever shave her head, and Uncle Chiaotzu isn't bald. The two laugh, and Tien tells her he couldn't find any candy in her hair. 
His best guess is that Trunks lied to get a rise out of her, and she played right into his hands. Bowie blushes and pouts, and grumbles that Trunks was such a stupid boy. Tien can finally see what her mother meant about boys and girls who like each other, treating each other like they didn't. Changing the subject, he asked her to help him fly home, but Kyle Kim was still affecting his body, and he didn't know if he could make it. And so, the two begin a slow flight home. Still dwelling on Vegeta's words, Tien asks his daughter if she knows the difference between him when he was a Saiyan, and now as a human. Buri thinks for a while, and finally comes to the answer of, not really. He just seemed to train a small amount less, and even that was barely noticeable. But if she was honest with her father, when he made that wish, at first, she felt kind of bad. She felt like being half Saiyan was something she should feel ashamed of. But, as she thought this way, she remembered a long time ago, when she had been younger and very self-conscious about her third eye. She remembered Trunks teasing her about it a lot and ran home crying one day because of it. Once hearing of their daughter's plight, her mother and father held her and told her that she was perfect just the way she was. Her eyes were beautiful and made her special. The way she began to see it, her dad had originally been human, yes, but he had always been her dad, and that had not changed as far as she could see. To her, her dad was perfect because he was her dad and she loved him. In a rare show of sentiment for Tien, the two couldn't help but stop their flight and share a hug in midair before going home. Elsewhere, Vegeta returns from his meal to see that Tien really had left. Sighing, he decides he's bored of training here anyway, and just so happens to hear Whis, Bulma, and Launch together. As they both lived in West City and had been pregnant around the same time and had Saiyans as spouses, the two women had deepened their acquaintance held when they attended the World Martial Arts tournaments together. Because of this, it's very plausible that they would hang out together as adults. With the two being together so frequently, this means that Whis will be accompanied by both of them when making visits to Earth. I also think he'd be pretty endeared to launch. Her blue-haired form is very agreeable and nice to be around, while the blonde one would be fiery and likely entertaining to Whis. The switch between the two personalities would also be interesting. Not to mention, Launch will be instrumental in introducing Whis to Earth alcohols, his favorite of which being whiskey. Having been away the last few weeks, Vegeta had had no idea Whis had been visiting. Like in canon, Bone would chew him out for being gone so long while Whis and Launch laugh at them, before Whis reveals his identity as Beerus' attendant and his teacher. Also like in canon, Vegeta would be intrigued in training under Whis, and so would try and win Whis' favor by taking him to different restaurants, which would go like in canon. Though in this timeline, something changes around the time that Vegeta tries to prepare a dish for Whis himself. Krillin and Yamcha, having free time at the moment and being able to sense the key of Whis since they had both attained god forms, as well as Vegeta, they decide to come and see what everyone was up to. When being filled in on while Vegeta is cooking, the two are also very fired up to try and attain Whis as their new master. So the two slightly start a bargain with Vegeta by convincing him to let them cook for Whis so they may all go. After running through an entire bowl of eggs, Vegeta concedes, and the three work together to make Whis a pretty good omelet. To Vegeta's great chagrin, all three are permitted to go and train with the Angel, and Krillin and Yamcha have the sense to go and inform their wives that they'll be gone for a while, and before long, they're decked out in new threats and heading off to Beerus' planet. Also like in canon, nothing really happens for the next six months, and no one really outside of the families of Vegeta, Krillin, and Yamcha know that the three have left on a training trip. On top of this, with everyone having individual jobs and no huge events, the entire group hadn't really had a reason to gather together in a while. The biggest thing currently going on was Videl giving birth to a baby girl named Pan. And even in the case of her birth, it wasn't too out of character for Vegeta or Tien to not attend events like this. However, Krillin and Yamcha's absence is somewhat strange. But with cute baby Pan there, neither Pizza nor 18 are really thinking about telling anyone where their knucklehead husbands are. And no one really takes the time to ask either. Tien hadn't sought out Vegeta for training due to their little spat. He considered trying to train with his formerly human friends, but he was hesitant. He respected Yamcha and Krillin, but over the years in times of peace, they didn't take training as seriously as they should have. Goku and Gohan were pretty good options, but the scholar was usually too busy for a decent spar. On the other hand, Chi-Chi kept Goku buried in work. Last he'd heard, the woman had enlisted the help of Yamcha's daughter Kurizu in working part-time as Goku's manager, making sure he was out and working and not training. But according to Buri and the other kids, Slave Driver was a better title for Yamcha's money-loving offspring. With no more options, he decided he is better off going back to his somewhat soulless training style. He'd gotten to really enjoy having a strong training partner and realized his growth was much higher due to it. Even training with his daughter wasn't a great option now. While she still loved martial arts, she wanted to do other things now. And Blonde Lodge was always quick to chew him out about squandering her free time. This means that he can train with Buri just not anytime he wants to, hence why she's not a great option. So instead, I think I'll begin to try and train with his students more and to accelerate their training as individuals to see if any of them stood out. If this were to happen earlier, I think it's very possible that one or more of his students would learn how to weaponize and sense key earlier than in canon, even though Tien would still be pretty dissatisfied with his training partner situation. At least by doing this, he can start cultivating some high-level students who can be better training partners later on. One day though, he noticed that all five of the kids have been hanging out around the dojo. This includes Kurizu, who mentioned that she had taken the day off from Goku duty. 
So this meant that the Saiyan was free to train without interruption. Not wanting to pass up this opportunity, Tien asked for Chaozu to hold down the fort, and make sure the Chun's drain hard, and shoots off towards Mount Paozu. When he arrives, he is shocked to find the house deserted, and so decides to go and check Gohan's house. This place he actually finds quite crowded. Chi Chi, Boma, Launch, and Videl were there with Gohan and Mr. Satan, along with Baby Pan. The story went that Goku had been there earlier that day, but he had heard Boma mention where her husband, Krillin, and Yamcha were, and apparently bolted off, seeking to join the trio of Saiyans on Beerus' planet. This also reveals the Tien where Krillin and Yamcha have been this entire time. Chi Chi had tried to stop Goku, but the Saiyan was slippery when he wanted to be, and to be fair, Kurizu had made him much more productive, so she felt he deserved a break. Asking Gohan if he wants to spar, Tien is turned down. As the hybrid mentions, he's already done his workout for the week, and didn't plan on doing much else. Besides, he hadn't tried tapping into the God form again in months, and wasn't sure if he even could if that was what Tien wanted. Disheartened, Tien prepares to leave when Chi Chi informs him that Piccolo is free to train since Pan isn't being babysat by him. With renewed vigor, the former Saiyan darts off once again to find a training partner. On this same day that Goku leaves for Beerus' planet, something in space seems to be happening. Current commander of the Freezer Force, Sorbet, gets more bad news of more and more losses throughout the universe. Groaning in frustration and rubbing the bridge of his bulbous nose, he checks on the progress of his next desperate gamble. Getting in touch with those he'd set to the task, he hears about the progress with finding the Namekians. Of course, it was unfruitful. Now remember, nothing has really changed a ton with how Frieza died in canon and the current day Pilaf gang. So to save time, everything inside of Frieza's resurrection would go the exact same. Nothing would really change until Frieza hears about the exploits of Goku and the Saiyans in this timeline. Thinking back to the mysterious Super Saiyan that killed him on Earth after being defeated by Goku on Namek and hearing tale of Vegeta killing Majin Buu alongside some other strange Saiyan had really unnerved him. Remember, he had been told by King Cold to never challenge Majin Buu, and he would likely think that Vegeta is still weaker than Goku, meaning he would assume that Goku is much stronger than Majin Buu, to the point where the creature would only be a waste of his time, and supposedly the number of Saiyan offspring had kept going up. As intelligent as Frieza is, it's more likely that he would take more precautions instead of less. So with his own pride on the line, and the knowledge that his forces had degraded while Goku and his had apparently greatly soared in strength, he would need to grow stronger than he originally thought he would have to. Because of this, Frieza would still decide to take on 4 months of training at least, but in this timeline, he would decide to take on 2 training partners instead of 1. Tagoma and Sasami would both be his punching bags for the next 4 months, beating them down even harsher than he did to Tagoma and Cannon, and having them drag themselves back to the rejuvenation tanks to come back the next day for the exact same punishment. With two training partners and more motivation, I think that Frieza would get a lot stronger than he does in canon, as with Tagoma and Sasami. Arriving to Beerus' planet, Goku is greeted by a happy Yamcha and Krillin and an unhappy Vegeta, as he has to get settled. Thankfully, with the four of them, the chores Whis has them do are able to be tackled a lot easier, and left more time for training, resulting in Goku quickly trying to catch up to his friends. Before coming to train with Whis, Goku had definitely been the strongest Saiyan known to everyone, but in this six month gap, he'd been far surpassed. And between Krillin, Yamcha, and Vegeta, the prince had been the top dog, but Krillin was currently nipping at his heels. One day, when we saw fit to spar with his students, he broke it down to them, explaining their biggest issues, and even putting his signature on the shirts. According to Whis, Vegeta was too tense. This apparently slowed him down in the midst of battle, as he thought about every single movement and attack. On the other hand, Goku and Yamcha apparently had a very similar issue, but the exact opposite of Vegeta's. They were too carefree, too loose and arrogant. They let their guards down at the absolute worst of times. Krillin, on the other hand, was a mix between these philosophies. The fighter wasn't tense, but focused. He wasn't arrogant or cocky, but maintained a healthy caution of opponents. This had evolved due to his apprehension and fear due to his two deaths and defeats during this timeline. Remember, Krillin in this timeline was initially the one to suggest becoming Saiyans, as he felt paranoid at losing to the androids once again as their future counterparts did. And now with his Saiyan psychology, he had boosted his own confidence, and this made him the most well-rounded fighter of all the Saiyans. To Whis, Krillin would soon be the strongest of the Saiyans. He still introduces them to the concepts of their body moving independently of their thoughts, and he suggests that Krillin will be the first of them to master this technique. Of course, saying this in front of the other three Saiyans would definitely fire the three up to correct those flaws of theirs while also growing stronger. And I think with all four of them there, the improvement on that front would be more significant than it was in canon compared to what we saw, but not enough for any major changes to the timeline to take place right now. On the other hand, their gains in strength would be completely staggering. In Dragon Ball, having training partners is very advantageous to your training, so it would reason that doubling the amount of godly training partners would really increase how strong everyone gets during this time. And the Saiyans would discover the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form, which is renamed to Super Saiyan Blue, somewhere during the next four months. All of them had great control of their Super Saiyan forms beforehand, the only exception being Yamcha, who had never fully mastered Super Saiyan. Because Frieza was revived, Galactic Patrolman Jocko arrives to Earth for the first time in a long while to warn Boma about the threat, this time running into the antics of Goten, Trunks, and Marin, while Buri and Kurizu try to get them to behave to get Jocko's information to Boma. 
Once they meet, he warns her that Frieza is back and is on his way to Earth with a thousand soldiers. Oh, and he'd be there in an hour. Boma panics trying to get in contact with Whis instantly since the majority of their strongest warriors are off world. No good. Thinking quickly, she calls Lunch to warn Tien and hopefully have him go and warn those who could help. Frieza and his men would still arrive like in canon and would leave a crater where a city had been as a hello. Not long after, the Z fighters begin gathering. First, Gohan. Luckily, having kept up his training at least a light amount, so he was definitely in shape. Next was Piccolo, who remember had trained with Goku in the other world. Then was Android 17, who had decided to continue living with Master Roshi when Krillin and 18 decided they wanted their own place. And as such, the Turtle Hermit was able to hitch a ride with his tenant. Though as a precaution, the children were not informed of the threat, and Android 18 was staying back to protect them and those who could not fight. The caution the Z Fighters had always taken in the past had not faded by any means. Tien was currently running late. The reason being, he had to take the time to gather and be sure his students were prepared for this threat. Remember, in this timeline, he built his dojo in West City, with a friendly endorsement from Mr. Satan. Because of this, the Tenshin Ryu dojo would flourish very quickly. This would allow Tien more time to separate the mediocre novice from those of actual martial arts talent. So with those factors in mind, these guys are at least more powerful than most of Frieza's soldiers, most only around as strong as Zarbon or Dodoria. But with their numbers and aid, and the aid of Android 17 and his infinite stamina, it would cut the workload of those originally involved. This would go a bit better than it did in canon, with more of Frieza's men taken down than the original story before Sasami rushes into battle. Once again, he is significantly stronger than his canon counterpart. With this happening, Tagma realizes that if he is outdone, he will not receive Frieza's favor. Together with Sasami, they both rush the Z Fighters and land some pretty heavy and substantial blows that begin incapacitating and even killing some of Tien's unprepared students and the weaker fighters. With Master Roshi and the remaining students injured and outgunned, as well as having limited Setsu Beans, Tien asks 17 to try and get them out of there. Though he does not like it, he is the best option for the transport. 17 scoffs and creates a force fit around the injured and the dead to gather them all up and carry them on one trip. He then announces to everyone to try not to die as he will be back soon. This now left only three fighters to deal with Frieza and his men. Gohan is shocked by how much power Tagama and Sasami had, and he couldn't even begin to fathom how much power Frieza was hiding. Desperately, he begins trying to tap into the Super Saiyan God form out of pure need to save his friends. Unfortunately, his neglect of trying to use the form made it very difficult to reach now, so instead, he was only able to attain the Super Saiyan form. Meanwhile, Piccolo instantly took off his training weights, and Tien centered himself. Remember, he has not lost any power in his base form since becoming human again, only his Saiyan biology and the benefits of it. And considering he has been training this entire time, he is stronger than he used to be. Just not as strong as he could be, and right now, that was painfully obvious to him. Splitting up, Gohan realizes he is the only match for Frieza and rushes him, while Piccolo and Sasami clash and Tien begins trying to deal with Tagama. Sadly, at their current states, neither of the three are doing extremely well here. In canon, Frieza was able to pretty easily dismantle Gohan, and even though Gohan is a bit stronger due to attaining his god form and training a small amount more in this timeline, he is still no match for Frieza who remember is stronger than his canon counterpart. So right now, he's doing his best to hold back as much as possible and not kill Gohan too quickly. He really wanted Goku to see his son as he died. Meanwhile, Tagama and the difference between their powers weren't the only problems for Tien. His lanky body and crisp punches and kicks continued to be a decent thorn in Tien's side, as he couldn't get in any clean hits. He immediately had to resort to Kyle Ken just to block attacks without having his arms broken. With Piccolo, he is doing decently against Asami compared to the others. It was very clear now more than ever that his training in the other world had paid off, as he was maneuvering around Shisami very well. This allowed him to land some decently effective pot shots, but it was clear overall the Red Warrior was much stronger, and the small advantage Piccolo had was made up for by Sasami's brute strength. Thinking of a different approach, Piccolo asked Tien to switch opponents with him, and they do so after a solar flare. This time, Takuma's lanky body is countered by Piccolo's use of his stretchy arms. This made it very easy for Piccolo to catch and bind all the other aliens' attacks. Tagama was still stronger than him by a pretty decent amount, meaning the only thing keeping Piccolo in the fight right now was his technique. While on the other hand, Tien's strange techniques and speed with the Kao Ken confused Sasami, making the big hits easier to land. While locked down by Piccolo, Takuma sees Sasami finally grab Tien in a huge bear hug and smirks. He struggles to overpower Piccolo and raises his hand. As he does, he releases a key blast that flies through Sasami's back and out of Tien's. The two then both fall to the ground on the edge of death, with Sasami cursing Tagama as a traitor. Piccolo struggles to do it, but he is able to subdue Tagama for long enough just to get over to Tien and just barely give him a Sensu Bean to get him back into the fight. While on the ground, the Ginyu bits of this scenario would indeed still happen, and with Tagama's less repressed power is released, along with Frieza's huge energy from firing at Gohan, Buri and the kids are finally able to convince 18 to accompany them to the battlefield. Arriving, they see the now healed Tien and Piccolo trying to take on Tagama together, while Gohan is weirdly trying to dodge around and block Frieza's weak death beams. Seeing his older brother in dire straits, Goten rushes in, causing Trunks to fall right behind him, 
and 18 to curse in order the others should stay back unless they fuse before following them in as well. Always want to follow orders, Buri asks Mirren to fuse with her, but the other girl admits that she can't really remember the steps that well, and neither did Kurizu for that matter, making her and the others watch helplessly. Frieza, seeing Goten and Trunks, would have the exact same reaction to them, and would seriously try to kill them, shutting down any attempts at attacking him with a vicious death beam that actually shot through both boys. Summoning up the last of his willpower, Gohan is able to force his ragged body to move and cover the boys, taking the brunt of the attacks and saving them from any further damage. Now this will put a smile on Frieza's face. Seeing three Saiyan offspring so pitifully weak compared to him and at his mercy put Frieza in a way better mood, and I think he would stop his torture for only a bit to try and get them to gloat and beg for their lives. While the growing number of Saiyans had initially unnerved him, these three were nothing substantial. When this week, it was perfectly fine to play with Prey, and after all that time in hell, he would be damned if he didn't enjoy snuffing out every member of this race. Buri, seeing her friends in trouble, flies into her own rage, catching the attention of Ginyu as she comes a Super Saiyan, and nearly being destroyed by a Ki Blast from him, were it not for her father who struggled to block the attack with a Ki Eye in his Kyle Ken state. He then orders the kids to go with Boma and Jocko and flee. Meanwhile, 18 and Piccolo, who had seen the dire straits that Gohan and the kids were in, were trying to find a way to get in and get them out of there and away from Frieza without being killed themselves. Realizing that Ginyu Tagum is still a very big threat, he fires into the Kaioken times 10 and plows into Ginyu as hard as he can. For a single second, he surpasses Ginyu, and he's able to throw him towards Frieza, who doesn't allow the subordinate to make contact with him, and bats him away, putting Ginyu down for the moment. Meanwhile, Boma, Mirren, and Kurizu are finally able to get in contact with Whis on Beerus' planet, while 18 and Piccolo use Tien's distraction to get Gohan and the boys away from Frieza. Ginyu begins to groggily stand up, only to be met with the angry three-eyed stare of Tien and Buri, as the duo use a full power father-daughter tribeam to do him in. With the attack being point blank, and with Ginyu being in that tired and unprepared state, it is enough to put him down for good. Gohan's injuries were definitely the worst, his life currently hanging on by a thread and his heart having stopped while Goten and Trunks would be okay giving proper medical attention. Piccolo uses his powers to restart Gohan's heart and give him the Sensu Bean, letting him get a decently sizable Zenkai boost as he stands back up to his feet with Piccolo, asking him what was happening. Just before the Namekian could fill him in what had happened since he passed out, his eyes widen and he shoves Gohan out of the way, taking the full brunt of a big death beam from Frieza that leaves him sporting a huge hole in his chest as he falls over, dead. Once again, thrusted into an intense rage by seeing his mentor die by trying to protect him, Gohan is able to search deep within himself, and with a decent effort, he is finally able to tap back into the long neglected Godfall. Thinking that this power should definitely be enough to handle Frieza, he orders 18 to get Piccolo's body and the boys out of there and away from here. The cyborg does just that, as an angry Gohan rockets forward and plows right into Frieza. He begins to slam him with a flurry of attacks that are much too powerful for his first form. Seeing a Saiyan of Goku's lineage change hair color to overpower him unnerved this version of Frieza by a lot whose paranoia is much greater than the original version. Struggling to create a bit of distance from the hybrid, he is able to paralyze him with his telekinesis and send him flying away, as he begins trying to shift into different forms at high speed. Once again paranoid, he tries to reach his final form almost instantly. As he was able to do so relatively quickly in the anime version, I'll say he's able to do so here as well. This was more than enough to reclaim the power balance and really shifted towards Frieza's favor. As soon as Gohan is able to regain mobility, he rushes back at Frieza, but is easily snapped away with his tail, almost being knocked out by the inertia of the force being jostled back at him. Still angry, he tries to bulldoze Frieza again, but he returns the favor of the flurry of attacks Gohan had given him earlier and begins to beat down on him until one blows him away. Frieza was just about to pursue the hybrid when he heard Kaio Kikoho. He looked up to see a three-eyed warrior, burning with red energy just as a massively powerful red square-shaped beam slammed down on top of him, threatening to squash him. The attack was strong, but Frieza is too strong to go down to it, especially only being hit by it once. But it seemed to have done a decent amount of damage as the Emperor was staggering a bit. Gohan quickly realizes this, and appears behind Frieza, latching on him with his arm. He holds on for dear life and yells out that this is for Pan and Videl, and tells Tien to keep hammering away with the attack. With Gohan holding up still, Tien kept hammering away at the attack over and over and over again, pulling on more and more of his life force to attack Frieza and hopefully destroy him. Unfortunately, as the attack was damaging Frieza, it was definitely damaging Gohan. All three of them were currently dying, and the major problem was they were both dying faster than Frieza was. Resigned to taking Frieza down with him and Gohan, Tien prepares to sacrifice the last of his life to try and kill the Emperor. He then feels four familiar keys suddenly appear, and he passes out. Vegeta jumps up just in time to catch Tien's limp body before he hits the ground. He then calls him a fool and tells him to quit with the heroics. Android 17 would arrive back to the battlefield just in time to see this. At the same time, Frieza breaks out of Gohan's hold as his body flops to the ground. 
dead. The Emperor smirks, and the Saiyans snarl. And that plus other fans where I'll be leaving this timeline off for right now. Though I am going to hold a poll that you'll see in the iCard right now. Who kills Frieza? Goku, Krillin, Yamcha, or Vegeta? Yes, because of their training in this timeline, Frieza's death is already a done deal here. In canon, he was far outmatched. And even though he's strong as here, the Saiyans have had more training partners and more motivation. So be sure to vote in the iCard. I'm curious who you guys will pick. Also a question, did you notice the narrative style difference between the first bits of this video and the later parts? That's because part of this group was originally going to be a .5 side story. In other news, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm currently trying to reach 40,000 subscribers at the time recording this. And even by the time I have reached that goal, I'll definitely have a new goal set up. So every single subscription means a lot. Also, please share this video with your friends. A lot of people think the only good way to support content creators is by directly paying them. But this really isn't true. Sharing a video can exponentially increase a video's reach and range and help gain new subscribers to a channel. When you don't have or want to spend money to support your favorite creators, sharing their videos is a great way to do so. Finally, a massive shout out to the patrons. In Hero Tier, Lone McQuaid, Zyra Returns, Treb, and Stefan Kosfront. In Shinobi Tier, Pizza 15 x In Z Warrior Tier, Shannon Roberts. In the Beyond Tier, Knuckles OX, Don, and Robert Smith. And in the Plus Ultra Tier, DJ the Lazy Gamer, and Joseph Rambo. They seriously do keep the lights on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to take care of yourselves. And as always, go Beyond Plus Ultra. See you guys next time.